Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today on Sports File, it's with great regret that I uh, talk about the passing of one of the greatest athletes ever to play for the historic Toronto Blue Jays franchise. Now, for a lot of uh, modern day uh, Blue Jay fans, this name is, is going to be bring back a lot of good memories. Probably one of the most consistent and one of the most talented pound for pound. Uh, infielders in Blue Jay history and probably the best homegrown infielder and we're talking about again the excellent Octavio Antonio Fernandez Castro or better known uh, from his friends and colleagues and many fans as Tony Fernandez. Uh, unfortunately uh, Tony uh, was suffering from a kidney situation over the last three years and the kidney disease he was suffering from caused uh, some major problems with his uh, system. He took a stroke and he was in the news coma and unfortunately passed away on February 15th. Now, uh, Fernandez was one of many uh, prospects that came from the Dominican Republic or uh, the Dominican Republic program. He played 17 seasons major league baseball. He was a World Series uh, winner with Toronto in 93. And um, he was uh, a very talented shortstop. A little bit of history of Tony Fernandez was a number of uh, young Latino players that uh, were either acquired by or ended up with uh, Toronto. 70s or 80s. Tomasa Garcia, who was a Yankees prospect that came over. Alfredo Griffin, who uh, Fernandez replaced at shortstop, who came over for the Indians, and of course uh, Fernandez. Now, when I went to see a few uh, Blue Jay games in 1983, we heard rumors of Fernandez coming up to be the latest Dominican star to uh, be featured in the program because, you know, uh, the Toronto system in the 70s and 80s were strong. Uh, George Bell, uh, still Camposano, a few others. A lot of good players from the Dominican. Now he holds uh, many, many records as a Blue Jay and as a player for other squads. He had an 8, uh, 992 fielding per day, uh, percentage in 89, which was a nine year record for shortstops. And uh, he was shifted to third base and he had probably one of the best single season fielding percentage records with 991 and 994. So he was adept at third base or shortstop. Now he he wasn't full uh, Dominican Republic. He was actually uh, of Haitian descent, which was uh, he shared the island of uh, the Caribbean. He was uh, first scouted uh, by the Blue Jays almost 41 years ago, and uh, he was uh, again scouted by the, uh, the infamous Toronto and uh, down to Toronto scout Epi Guerrero, and was signed as a free agent in '79. And after a short career in the major league, uh, excuse me, minor leagues. He was promoted to the Blue Jays, like I said, in that uh, classic year of 83, where there were first uh, short inkling of, uh, you know, the case for the, the, the NLE's pennant. He became the team's uh, full-time shortstop in 85, and that year, of course, he had made it all the way to the ALCS, losing the Kansas in seven games. Um, he had, uh, he was good at the plate as well. He had 213 hits in 1986, and uh, which at the time, of course, was a major league uh, single season record for shortstop. For a lot of people, he was the yin uh, to Ozzy Smith's uh, yang. Ozzy Smith was gregarious. He was, uh, uh, you know, comic, outspoken. Fernandez was very introverted. Didn't talk to the media much, but my God, what a classic way. The only thing I can compare him with, uh, like a smooth, smooth skater or hockey, you look at somebody like uh, Ron Duguay or uh, Ovechkin. Someone can eat up a lot of uh, ice in quick time. And Fernandez, I mean, when he was on, he would never make a mistake. He was so consistent. And, and Toronto's pitching guys would have pitchers that would give the ground ball out to Fernandez. Uh, I know Dave Stevens said at the time, he said, having Fernandez a line, and he never had to worry about it. But uh, for some reason, he started to wear out his welcome in Toronto. But this was uh, actually the trade that brought the World Series in Toronto. He was part of one of the biggest deals in baseball history when he was traded uh, to the Padres, uh, as well as a great uh, first baseman that we call Cobart, the uh, Red Griffith of San Diego, for Roberto Alomar and Joe Carter. Now, this trade was uh, extremely, extremely uh, strong for Toronto, but ended up uh, kind of curtailing uh, Fernandez's career a little while. And for some reason, Fernando was dropped over to the Mets. 93 and he ended up uh, being back with Toronto for uh, the only player here in the house. So in this trade, he had not only Alomar at second, 
harder at first, and Fernandez basically was drained for himself, and he was brought back. So 93, they were pretty well unbeatable, and he had to be because, you know, they had strong opposition that year in the Phillies and the, uh, in the World Series. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, in that World Series, he broke another record uh, by driving in nine runs. Uh, it was a record for shortstop. So he was good offensive and defensively. Now, uh, he moved on for uh, uh, quite a number of times uh, during his career. He ended up with the Yankees and uh, uh, in, uh, after the 95 season. Uh, he was brought in because, uh, you know, uh, you know, to kind of tutor uh, Derek Jeter in his career. But, uh, but an early season injury led to Jeter being calling up a little bit earlier. And uh, in 96, he hurt his elbow, missed the entire season. Now, 97, he uh, ended up in Cleveland helping the team uh, get all the way to uh, the World Series. But uh, for some strange reason, he made a, made a, it never happened to before. He made a major error at second base in the bottom 11 in, in Game 7, which uh, broke up a double play and uh, put the winning run on base. Now, um, he had hit a two-run single earlier in the, uh, the game, which would gave a Cleveland a, a win that almost secured him, but uh, just the way it goes. No one blames uh, Fernandez for making that mistake. Actually, half the people uh, can't uh, remember exactly why it happened or just bad luck. Now, 98, he uh, rejoined the Blue Jays, uh, and his uh, batting stance was changed. He had a great uh, two-year career, hitting over 300 in that second one. Went over Japan in, uh, in 2000. And he returned to the majors uh, in 2001. And um, he played with Milwaukee and then he's four time with Toronto late in the season. But uh, Fernandez is known for uh, uh, many, many different things with his, his batting stance and style. Uh, he, he, uh, he was a very in shape athlete. And he was the first one to, we've known in the, the, the modern era, to cross train. He, uh, he would train even in the clubhouse with some of the material he was using. So now, um, only Ozzy Smith of the modern era is a better infielder, in my opinion, than Tony Fernandez when he was on. Uh, Jeter's kind of overrated because Jeter was more known for being a team leader. Fernandez wasn't a team leader. Tony Fernandez was Tony Fernandez. Now, uh, the 80s belonged to him. He had four gold glove awards for defense from 86 89. He was named to five all-star teams, ended up with a 288 batting average uh, with uh, 2,158 games played. And like I said, he was key in the postseason. He hit 327. Uh, also, a big part of his career, he hit for the cycle against the uh, against the A's when he was playing the Yankees in uh, in 95. Now, uh, he's a current member of the Ontario Sports Hall of Fame. And um, I would suspect down the road he will be making it uh, into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame for obvious reasons. I think uh, his uh, unfortunate death at such a young age, um, it, was, uh, it was a time for the Blue Jays and for Major League Baseball where players like Fernandez were hometown heroes. Fernandez was such uh, a nice guy to many people. I hear many stories about him being very gracious with the fans, very self-deprecating, but I remember Alfredo Griffin uh, basically being Nazi scared at uh, Fernando was coming along. Griffin was a good infielder, but as soon as Tony Fernandez showed up in Toronto, it's like he's a once-in-a-lifetime talent. In my lifetime, I'm very fortunate to say I saw Tony Fernandez at his uh, best, and at the uh, Blue Jay team, uh, again, you even had uh, people like uh, John Olrood, uh, a good prospect for Toronto, uh, to see all the talent, especially in 93, you had Molitor, 92 with Winfield, uh, you know, uh, Ed Spray kind of uh, took one of the infield spots in that Fernandez era. But like I said, he just wanted to play ball, and uh, he played ball like probably no one in Toronto Blue Jay history ever did before, because what you see is what you get. Alomar could be confrontation, Joe Carter would be uh, you know, uh, some people didn't like his overall stats, but Fernandez was a complete player. And like I said, he had injuries, and uh, who knows what the complications from his uh, kidney disease uh, might have impacted him early in his career.
but at age, uh, you know, uh, uh, dying at a young age, that's happened with athletes. We, we only sometimes celebrate them when they're gone, but 57 years old, you know, I'm 54 and I mean, I got a lot, a lot, a lot to do. And, uh, you know, Fernandez, uh, you look at Bichette and, uh, Biggio and Guerrero, they owe a lot to, uh, Tony Fernandez cause he paved the way as did Griffin, uh, as did Damaso Garcia, uh, you know, uh, the great, uh, infielders of in Toronto, Alomar as well. They are the legacy player. He's a top 20 Toronto Blue Jay player and probably a top five, uh, shortstop of the modern era. I'm talking from 1970 to uh, 2020. The statistics are there. The excellence is there. The bat is there. Uh, didn't hit many home runs, but he didn't need to. Ozzy didn't need to hit any home runs. But if you're saying Ozzy Smith, you got to think about Tony Fernandez. Uh, you know, and like any other any other player, uh, I'm not one to draw drama hockey uh, fanatic. I'm not an expert on baseball. I know what I like. And Tony Fernandez, like I said. Consistency, consistency, consistency. So to the friends and colleagues and family of Tony Fernandez, we wish you Godspeed. May, uh, may Tony look down from heaven and give inspiration to, uh, to Bichette and Biggio and, and Guerrero and the, what they call the new era of Toronto. And I know uh, Buck Martinez and different former Blue Jays have been uh, coming in on CBC and different talking about the quality. But I still remember again when I saw the Blue Jays in 83, uh, I saw the first ABC Monday night uh, baseball game ever from Toronto with Earl Weaver, Howard Cosell, Lyle Michaels. And you could you could sense there was a change in the air. This wasn't the Blue Jays of 77 in the snow. Uh, and then when I found out this young guy, Fernandez, was coming up. And, uh, you know, uh, Felix, for, Felix Fernandez, uh, the, the old infielder, I think, from Pittsburgh, you know, uh, we were saying, well, what do you, will he be another one of, you know, a no-hit Fernandez? But my dear departed father said, he said, this guy got game. This guy got, this guy got talent. So ladies and gentlemen, a sad day, but let's have good memories of Tony Fernandez. I know uh, every Blue Jay fan that plays the infield is, uh, will be thinking of him this spring. And I hope the Blue Jays uh, uh, do a patch on his arm in Major League Baseball. will consider him for uh, the Hall of Fame down the road. Have a good day.